Changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. And the issue is that some who are in the church are being led along those same lines as many are questioning the reality of who God is and who Christ is. And that's what we are dealing with in the book of Jude. If you go to the book of Jude again, we started this last week. And Jude is warning the church, he warned the church at that particular time and even the warning is for today he says he and I'm referencing from the message Bible he says I'm, in, I'm insisting and begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to God and cherish. I started reading there somewhere around verse 3. What has happened is that some people have infiltrated our ranks. Our scriptures warned us this would happen. Who beneath their pious skin are shameless scoundrels. Their design is to replace the sheer grace of our God with sheer license, which means doing away with Jesus Christ, our one and only master. It goes on with the warning to those who had been dragged away before. And if you will go down to verse number... 17. He says, but remember, dear friends, that the apostles of our master, Jesus Christ, told us this would happen. In the last days, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. Aren't we living in those days? People don't take this word seriously anymore. And often they show up in churches throughout this world. Elder Dina asked the question a few minutes ago during praise and worship before she started the song about, I don't know what you've come to do. What, why are you here? And people come to churches many times for social connections, business propositions, looking for a soulmate and everything else but not desiring truth, not trying to live according to the word of God. And he said this was going to happen in the last days. There will be people who don't take these uh, things seriously. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and lusts. These are the ones who split churches, thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them, no sign of the Spirit. But you, dear friends, carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith by praying in the Holy Spirit staying right at the center of God's love 
keeping your arms open and outstretched, ready for the mercy of our master, Jesus Christ. This is the unending life, the real life. Go easy on those who hesitate in the faith. Go after those who take the wrong way. Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. Did y'all hear that? Be tender with sinners, but not soft on sin. The sin itself stinks to the high heaven. My God, is that the essence of what your Bible says? I want to talk about confronting what's crippling your faith, part two. Now, Father, we bless you and honor you and thank you for this opportunity to share your word, God. Thank you for your presence here today. We know, I know that you're real. There are others here who know that you're real. And yet, God, in the midst of us, there are those who still have doubts and questions. They're skeptics. And so, Father, I pray that you would minister to them, convince them, convict them by your spirit and by your word that these are last days and that this world is not our eternal home, but that we must prepare to spend eternity somewhere. I pray that you would move me out of the way and usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Before you take your seat, will you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh good neighbor, we need to confront what's crippling your faith. Turn on the other side or behind you. Get, look at somebody else and say, neighbor, say, oh good neighbor, good, good neighbor, let's help Bishop talk about confronting what's crippling your faith. I'm going to help him. What about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes there are, you know, there are diseases that begin to work on and against your body. You really, really may not recognize what's going on initially. There are things, sometimes uh, people are, are dealing with debilitating diseases that begin to work against them even before they show up physically. They're, they're crippling the body, but they don't see the being in the bones yet. And that's what I'm thinking about when I think about something that is crippling your faith. Right now, you may say that, it, it, my faith is intact. I'm, I'm good, but, uh, but uh, he, he warns us that we got to be careful uh, that there's not something working on the inside that is trying to cripple our faith. And so last week I told you that, and that we've got to struggle. We've got to fight against uh, uh, this opponent. We've got to confront, and we've got to fight with everything within ourselves we got to encounter we have to go after we have to battle we have to push against the things that are trying to cripple our uh, faith and and so Jude Jude is warning the people and he says that these people have crept in they have they have eased in unnoticed and uh, they these uh, teachers crept into the church with the intention of not being detected and want to use the opportunity to spread wrong or twisted words. And they, they are trying to throw the people off course and, and so he gave us a good warning uh, on last week and, and he uh, told us that we got to make sure that we understand what uh, grace is and and uh, grace is not just giving us a free license to do whatever uh, we want to do. Isn't that right? True grace, we said, in no way seeks to 
excuse living that is contrary to the word of God. In other words, when you understand the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, you want to line up. You desire to line up and, and you want to make sure that uh, you're not looking for excuses to live any kind of way. Your heart your heart understands that grace is to be taken seriously and it hungers and thirsts after righteousness knowing that it will be filled. And, and uh, so we, we desire to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And, and so he says that uh, the way that we're going to deal with uh, these teachers and these things that uh, are happening to try to cripple our faith he says we're going to confront it uh, we're not getting ready to fight and fall out uh, he gives us the methodology for contending he he didn't say kick them out of the church but there at verse number 20 he says but you dear friends he said carefully build yourselves up in this most holy faith all right and, uh, and so uh, we cannot get drawn in by the ones who have fallen. We talked last week about people. You have seen people that used to walk closely with God. You have seen people who used to serve God. You, we've seen people in ministry turn and walk away. My God, what, what could have drawn them back away uh, from walking uprightly with God and turning their back on it? Well, listen... If one-third of the angels uh, were, were deceived enough to leave the heavenly portals and uh, come to earth with Lucifer, then you know then that we got to be on guard and because if we aren't careful, chances are that we could get drawn out just like them. He says, he says, uh, that, uh, that he exhorts the people of God to contend, to use everything you got. What does that look like? Now, we got to understand that it is the doctrine and the teaching that accepts a theology of grace but denies Jesus' lordship over the life. There are a whole lot of folk that even want Jesus as Savior, but they don't want him as Lord. I want him to save me, deliver me, set me free, but I don't want him to have uh, any kind of jurisdiction over my life and my lifestyle. Do I have anybody? When Jesus is not in control, biblical grace is corrupted. And this leaves room for modern day interpretation and application and that's what we have now that's why I told you last week you got to be careful getting your gospel and your messages off of everything on social media and even when you are uh, on the internet and you're researching you got to be careful what website you're pulling information from come on somebody you you better go down to the bottom and see who wrote what it is you've been quoting and, and posting and reposting and all that kind of stuff uh, because we, uh, we, we, we've got some perverted things that are out there. They, and they will not follow what is truth. And now you know in a court uh, situation an attorney is charged with trying to discredit the truth by some line of attack on the witness even if that witness has the eyewitness truth. This is so that uh, to render that witness unreliable. Men today try to pick holes in, uh, uh, take away and twist the word uh, or, or say the Bible is not relevant today in order that what it says does not have to be believed or followed. And when we have a modern day interpretation and application, you will hear, first of all, put this down, you, you will hear uh, A, preaching forgiveness with no demand for repentance. Preaching forgiveness but with no demand for repentance. There's a word called antinomianism, 
Uh, and the word antinomian comes from that. I don't expect you to try to keep up with that. I just every now and then will throw out something fancy to sound impressive. <laughs> El, el, elder, elder is in town. I thought I'd throw out something fancy and impress the elder. Antinomianism comes from the word antinomian, and it comes from a Greek word anti, which means against, and then nomos, which means law. It refers to the doctrine that it is not necessary for Christians to obey the moral law. In other words, faith, they say, frees the Christian from such obligations. It is the idea that one can experience the grace of God without changing behavior. Now, the devil is a lion here. Come on now. They, 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 they may not present it as uh, antinomianism, but uh, we have a whole lot of people uh, who are teaching and, and preaching and believing that, uh, that we are not obligated uh, to follow the word of God and the moral laws of God just because we have uh, been forgiven and, and uh, we want to experience the grace of God, but we want to keep doing what we've been doing. That's why we're always debating with each other. That's why we're always asking each other, uh, uh, do you think it's all right to do this as a believer? Do you think as a Christian it's all right for me to go here, go there, participate in this? Do you think? And we're always questioning that uh, because uh, we want to, to, to live and have Christianity, but we don't want to change our behavior. We, we want to be saved and we want to spend eternity with God, but God let that begin when I die. While I'm living, because people are saying you only have but one life to live. You better go on and live it up. You better go on and do your thing. And so they want to get saved and, and then keep on participating and doing the thing they've been doing in their previous life. Come on, somebody. Uh, but you got to recognize that, uh, that when you get saved, and uh, God, you may not lose the taste immediately, but there ought to be a desire uh, for you to be moving toward sanctification and being cleansed from old stuff and getting rid of old habits because my God, as I told you last week that, uh, that uh, Tim, Paul told Timothy that, uh, that I, I want to warn you that, that you got to live something while you're here. Yeah, you, you're, not, you're not just waiting until the by and by. He said you got to live a life uh, that is sanctified while you're in the earth. And then you ought to desire, if you've really been uh, born again, you ought to desire to live a life like Christ. Maybe we need to question my salvation if I don't ever want to look like Jesus. If I'm ashamed of Jesus, I don't want to change and be like Christ and perfect the things concerning me, uh, then maybe I need to question as to whether or not I've really been born again. Because if you've really been born again, you will have the Holy Spirit in you and you'll begin to decide. You'll say, create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. You, you, you won't be satisfied uh, living a, a dirty life and, and, and put, participating in any and everything if you really connect connected with Jesus Christ. It is a progressive sanctification. I do understand, but at some point you can't look just like you looked when you before you got I wish I had somebody in here. We don't like to talk about this because we want to do it as big as we used to do it. We want to do it like we used to do it, and we don't want anybody to say anything about it. I don't mind coming here, reading scripture, singing, and being a part of what's going on. Um, but listen, you tend to your business, and let me tend to mine. It's my thing. I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, the devil is a liar. That's what James said. You better learn how to fight because that kind of stuff begins to cripple your faith. 
You start looking over at other people and you start thinking, well, they do a little of this and do a little of that and they seem to be all right. That's right. Every man, and when the time comes, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 says that every man is going to have to stand before the judgment seat and give an account uh, of his life, good or bad, the things he has done. I don't care. You can smoke as much drugs if you want to. You can drink Hennessy all you want to. You can live contrary to God all you want to. That ain't going to move me. I'm trying to do what God, I'm telling somebody in here that at some point we need to turn and look at this devilish stuff and say enough is enough. Come on somebody. Uh, yeah, that, but we got folk that want to do it like we did it before we got saved. We don't want to change our behavior. We get comfortable with grace. We want grace. We get comfortable with grace. Grace got me. Grace got me. Grace got me. Grace has me covered. Let me tell you something. Understand that repentance is more than changing the mind. The Holy Spirit will remind you of sin not to condemn and beat you up. But, uh, but that... Uh, that he will cause you to realign your pathway. Everybody gets off. Come on, somebody. That old nature, come on, come on maybe I need to testify. That old nature will try to rise right back up in the Holy Spirit who reminds us that, no, that, that's not uh, according to me. Uh, no, that doesn't line up with me. You, he didn't come in to box you out and to beat you down like Mike Tyson beat somebody. Uh, he, he comes so you can realign your pathway so that you can say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Let me, God, forgive me for that. Oh, my God, let me shift from this and realign my direction. We ought to not be wanting, uh, walking around feeling beat down and condemned because of sin. That's not what he wants. Please don't, un don't misunderstand. God doesn't want you beat down and we ought not be beating people down. I'm not here to beat up anybody. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Free from it. It doesn't have you bound. You know, some of us walk around talking about, you know, it's something you just can't help. You know why you can't help it? Because you don't want to help it. Huh? Come on, somebody. Verse 3 says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his son, his own son, in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. If you uh, uh, desire to walk in the spirit and you press and you push and you fight with everything you got to walk in the spirit, then that's what you will do. The Holy Spirit will also remind us of our righteousness in Christ. We don't walk around focused on sin and the consequences, but when we do sin, the Spirit will remind us when we walk in error of the Word. I need for Him to do that. I give the Holy Ghost permission, interrupt everything I've got going on to remind me when I'm getting off track. I give you permission to burst right up in there. Huh? I give you access. Come in. Now, now if you really if you don't want them to be bothering, you say you got you put a do not disturb sign on the and I don't want nobody to bother me while I'm getting this on. I and I, I got this groove working and I'll I'll deal with that later on. But uh, I don't want to hear nothing about the spirit. I don't want to hear nothing about the Holy Spirit. I don't want to hear anything about this is wrong. And people get mad with you when you start saying, you need to check yourself, don't you? What you mean I need to check myself? <laughs> they get upset. Well, I mean, I'm just, I, I thought you right, want to walk up rightly. And I see you kind of uh, veering off. And I'm just here to kind of 
help you in nothing. Well, you know, if you want to be helped, you, you know, you, you'll receive it. But if you don't, you'll reject it. So whenever, whenever you see the, the teaching that has crept in, you will see preaching forgiveness with no demand for repentance. Hey, you got to repent. You ever seen folk that they, they, they do something, they don't ever want to say, I'm sorry, but they want to go on like everything is all right? They don't ever want to say, please forgive me, I repent. Yeah, uh, but they want to go on and, and act like everything is good. No, no. You got, if, if, if you're going to get forgiven, you got to first repent. All right? And, and then we'll see um, that we will have to contend or confront the faith when there is teaching that gives license to permit what God does not allow. B. Let's go to B. Teaching that gives license to permit what God does not allow. Now, who am I to change what God said? Who am I to reorient what's already prescribed in the Word? Huh? And so we got to recognize we're in a day where people are massaging the word to fit them and their lifestyle and what their proclivities are. Whatever it is, you can find a church that will ordain it. Come on, somebody. Whatever you want to do, you'll find somebody. If you got itching ears enough and you want to find it, you'll find somebody to second your motion. That's why people are running and, and switching and following, trying to get to this, because I'm trying to find somebody that will affirm what I want to do. Rather than me coming up to the word, I need the word to come down to me. Huh? See, see, you got to understand, uh, people will try to justify wrong. You see it by actions and activities that are promoted. And then C, uh, we know that, that we got to confront what's crippling our faith when we start accepting other belief systems. We create some soup theology. Y'all know what a soup hound is? Anybody know anything about a soup hound? Soup hound dog. Uh, you know what a soup is? Ain't nothing but a soup. What is that? He got a little bit of everything in him. That's all. He, 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 he ain't nothing but a soup pal. <laughs> you can't tell what he is. He, he got ears like a hound dog. Got a tail like a dash hound. And, you know, it, he's, they call him a soup. And, and we got soup theology. You know, we, we, we got a little everything. Folk want a little of everything. We got some Buddhism and... And some Hinduism, and we got, and we always talking about what Islam says, and and then and then let me tell you something. Ain't no such thing as Christian yoga. I'm going to Christian yoga. Yoga is 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 a discipline in another religion. We, we accept other belief systems and, and we're always trying to get with those that are around us and uh, adapting to the things that they are doing and so forth. When, and, and whenever we sense false or misguided teaching, one of the first things we have a tendency to do is to defend by yelling and screaming. Isn't that right? One of the first things that we do whenever we find false or misguided teaching, or we encounter somebody that may not be fully grasping or explaining or living by the word, is we start yelling and screaming and insulting the offenders. And you know what? That bothers me. Uh, I hate to see when believers start arguing and fighting with people and degrading people because they don't understand or believe exactly like you believe insulting one another yeah it, you see people who rather than trying to explain and teach the word 
uh, they would rather win the fight. They would rather win the debate. That's what it, uh, it, it ends up being. Uh, uh, one, because you may have a few more scriptures than I do. You may know a few more terms, but, but using it out of Christian character is no good either. So what good is it if you are in fellowship or in relationship or, you know, in, just at lunch with some people and, and uh, Christianity comes up or the Bible or living and, and then they don't believe like you believe or understand it. And before you know it, you've fallen out with them. And some of you go to cussing. To defend the faith. Let me tell you something. You don't talk to me like that. I got the Holy Ghost. Who you think you are? Whoa, you have turned to a demon now. You never saw Jesus do it. He could get upset, but he didn't lose his cool. He would confront the Pharisees, but he didn't lose it. We lose it. Fall out with her. I ain't talking to her no more. I ain't, I don't, don't call my number. No. I'm blocking you. Huh? Isn't that how we do it? On social media, you see these fights. Huh? That bothers me. How you going to win somebody like this? Huh? No, 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 no. You, Jude gives us a different strategy for confronting what's trying to cripple our faith. He says, he says, first of all, in verse number 20, we got to build up the body. That's what we got to do. We got to build up the body. Somebody say, build up the body. There are things that happen to the physical body that can tear or break down the body and make it more susceptible to foreign attacks. So you are not out fighting and fearing every disease. All right? What do they call that? What's that person? Hypochondriac. That's, that's afraid they're going to catch everything. I'm gonna, you know, they walk around. You, nothing wrong with them, but they got on a mask. Not a thing. What's wrong with doing nothing? I just don't want to catch this stuff out here. Huh? You know, you're not walking around taking cough syrup because you, you know. It, in other words, in other words, you, you, you are not out fighting and fearing every disease. You just do the things that will build up and strengthen your body. You take your vitamin C and, you know, you take your, your, your one a days or whatever, but you're not out, you know, going to the doctor saying, I need a shot for this and a shot for that because all this stuff is out. No, no, no. You got to understand then that the same way that, that you do it like that, you got to do it in terms of the body of Christ. Godless men enter the Christian community to bring division. And Jude charges us with the building up of self and the building up of each other on the most holy faith. This strengthens the unity of the church. Now, so then we begin, rather than going out trying to shoot down everything, then we understand if we strengthen ourselves and start building ourselves up, then we can better confront negative things and falsehoods when they show up. When you've been built up and you sit there and you listen to people and you know what the word says, you can hear it and move on about your business. It doesn't even move you. That, that doesn't line up with the word. They're taking that out of context. They're proof texts and they have tried to take something and found a scripture to plaster on it to make them feel right. That's what you got to do. Ephesians, over in Ephesians, and, and in the fourth chapter, uh, he tells us, he says, listen, uh, the, Paul talks about uh, here in verse number 11, he said, uh, and he himself, speaking of Christ, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping of the saints. That's a part of building up for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body. That's the building up of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God 
to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we may or that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. There are folk who are out to fool you on purpose. And you know, we pay people to fool us anyway. We go to magic shows for people to fool us. Like, ah, how do they do that? Well, they pay people to fool us. Pay people to deceive us. Isn't that right? There are people who will deceive in reference to the word of God. But when you build yourself up, he says you won't be tossed about. You won't be moved every time some new teaching comes along. Huh? And we got people who are running after every new teaching, every new sound, every new word. They're, they're excited, they're on fire, and they, they're hyped up. He says, and many times they get off into something and find out that it was not what it looked like. Tossed about. And then, and then over in Colossians chapter number 2, it says, rooted and built up in him, verse 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. You see, we got to build, we got to use everything we got. And let me tell you something. When you don't show up to Bible studies and times of impartation, let me tell you, you can't get it all on Sunday. See, because y'all won't give me time enough to really teach you long enough to get something. You, you, you know, if you're just going to come on Sunday, you ought to at least have some patience. You don't even want me to stand up here past 40 minutes on Sunday and you won't come back to Bible study so I'm cramming trying to get it in so you can be built up and strong and my God but at least show up on Wednesday so we can reiterate something you can't get it showing up once a week you can't get it never picking up a word you can't get it never reading a devotional or studying in your own private time and praying that God will uh, 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 explain by the spirit the things and teach you and build you up. That's why you get tricked. See, if you know, in other words, if you know what a real brother who's a real true brother looks like, you won't get fooled when one comes along, along that ain't true. You got, you got to study. That's why dad is, we need to be a part of our children's lives and these, our young ladies' lives and stuff. And, and so, so you can recognize the truth. And, and so he says, he says, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So the building is a continuation. Let me hurry. I understand how believers get so thrown off track, caught up with every latest crave and new teaching, not continuing the process of building. You don't continue. Get excited. It's like that word, you know, that falls and it gets excited. It takes a little bit of root, begins to sprout, but because it does not continue to grow its roots deep, when the winds come, when the sun comes, when the rain comes, it, it destroys it, and that's how many of our walk with God is because we will not continue to be built up and strengthened and let our roots run deep. Listen, you got more experience with flesh than you do with spirit. So what do you think you're going to default back to? Those who stay in the Word fight hard enough. And I know if you don't ever pick it up, I know if you don't ever come to Bible study, if you don't ever come to prayer time, if you don't ever continue in the Word, I know what's happening to, happening to you because I know what it's 
happens to me and I'm trying to study. Anybody else with me? Good God. Somebody say it's a continuation. I got to go. Building on the faith. The faith is the set of Christian doctrine that the apostles taught, that Jesus specifically delivered himself. It has been entrusted unto us. Ephesians 2 and verse 20 says, Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And then notice what Acts says there. Acts chapter uh, number uh, two. Are y'all still here? Have y'all checked out? Because I know we got that atten attention deficit disorder. Acts 2, chapter number 46 says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. That's at the birth of the church. The new believers continued following in, in the word. They sat with the apostles. They heard the word. They fellowshiped. They shared together. It didn't just say, now, we don't mind doing it when trouble comes. It didn't say when trouble comes. It didn't say when your money gets funny. It didn't say when you get sick. It didn't say when calamity strikes. It says continually. The most holy faith is the pure, unadulterated truth. Uh, and, and we understand that often the gospel gets twisted for fear of being shallow. There are people who are afraid of the simplicity of the gospel. And, and so they got to say something deep. They got to they got to come up with something that's deep and for the, for the hunger for some new revelation. You know, I've seen some bizarre stuff come out of the mouths of many that lead to confusion because it is not from the throne room of God. Huh? The word does not need to be added to nor taken away from. And sometimes you're sitting and you're listening to people and sometimes they're prophesying something and they're saying something and they've gone so far uh, out of bounds trying to come up with something that's so rich and deep because we like it when people say, ooh. And so some people are hung up on that and they're afraid of the simplicity of the gospel uh, and they will say anything so we can jump through uh, hoops and swing from chandeliers. But when you come down from it, it didn't make any sense. And it never manifests. The word doesn't need to be added to nor taken away from. If God only wanted us, and then there's some people who don't believe that we ought to be doing much with the Old Testament. But if God only wanted us to have half of the Bible... He could have left off the Old Testament. But the Old Testament, you understand, is the shadow of the new. Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. If we throw it out, let's quit quoting it. I don't want to hear you talking about bless going in and bless coming out anymore. I don't want to hear you talking about he's restoring everything that the palm of worm, the caterpillar destroyed the canker word. I don't want to hear anybody talking about it. I hear the sound of the abundance of rain anymore. I don't want to hear anybody talking about he's watering our dry places. I don't want to hear you talking about by his stripes we're healed because all of that came from the Old Testament. Do I have anybody? Jesus came to deliver and manifest all that was prophesied in the Old Testament. And so Jude says we got to build each other up. And that's how we fortify the community of faith to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I want you to be able to stand. 
We might not be shouting and running around this building, but when you land tomorrow in the marketplace and the devil comes up against you, I want you to be able to stand. When the enemy comes against your family and your household, I want you to be able to stand. Whenever the devil tells you you can't make it, I want you to be able to look that or scoundrel in the face and understand that because greater is he who is in me than he that's in the world. That's what I care about. Yeah, I I've gotten old enough now. I don't care anything about excitement and, and, and hoopla. I want you to be able to be a people who are mature, who are sound, who are stable, who are not running from here and there, and who can handle people when you come up against me talking about uh, this is not truth. you be able to stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe and you don't have to get mad and in the flesh, but you can give them word, and you can explain, and you can understand who God has ordained you to be. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we got to build each other up in the most holy faith. That's what we're talking about this morning. How are we going to build each other up in the faith? And let me tell you something. I'm, 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 my God. Let me give you these couple of things and then I'm done. That's what I'll do. How to build it up. Let's do it. I'm going to do it quickly. I'm going to do this in five minutes. Oh, 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 you know. Oh, so y'all calling me. All right. Let's go. How to build each other up. First of all, you got to prophesy and encourage each other. Huh? We got we to gotta, we gotta prophesy and encourage each other. Go to 1 Corinthians quickly, verse number 14. I feel you drifting. I see phones coming out. And they ain't yet. Some are and I do know some are taking notes. I take notes. I took notes one time during the funeral, and somebody that was sitting in front of me turned back and said, you ought to be ashamed on that phone. I said, Here, I gave you every note that the preacher just gave. So I do understand that, but it looks like it's not. So I'm not going to condemn you because I've been there. All right? 1 Corinthians 14 says, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks uh, mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. You can prophesy without being a prophet. Encouraging words... Words of affirmation, words that lift people up, words that tell people you will make it, words that tell people that you can overcome, words that tell people that I see what you're going through, but you continue to be encouraged and hang in there. That's how you start building people up. When people feel like jumping off of a building, you tell them you got a reason to live. When people feel like throwing in the towel, you tell them to take that towel and go wash it and keep living. When people say, I feel like just giving up you say you shall live and not die you don't have to be a prophet to prophesy he said that she all may prophesy I remember even over when Paul encountered Timothy, Timothy had gotten discouraged. And, and Timothy, said, Timothy said, I got three minutes and a half. Timothy said, in uh, Paul and Timothy chapter number, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 1. And uh, over there uh, in, uh, let's see, somewhere around verse number 3, Paul said it like this. He said, I thank God whom I serve with pure, a pure conscience, uh, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing. I remember you in my prayers night and day. It, when somebody say, I'm praying for you, that, that encourages me. Uh, he said, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. This is Paul talking to Timothy. Timothy was discouraged, and this is 2 Timothy chapter number 1, and I'm at verse number 5. He said, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that's in you, boy. He said, which dwelt first in your grandmama, uh, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And he said, and I am persuaded it's in you too. 
And you know that man is starting to feel a little bit better. He said, therefore, I remind you, stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hand. He said, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Every now and then, you ought to let God cause you to speak into somebody's life, encourage somebody's life. You ought to allow God to just, you know, it, you didn't have to, it didn't have to be planned, but it can be spontaneous. We were leaving the park yesterday and I ran into an old friend that, and I noticed that he was on crutches and, and I thought maybe it hurt his leg uh, just right then and I said man what happened to you and what did you do I was just thinking he tripped up or something he said well I had to have it amputated seven years ago and I didn't even realize he had on a prosthesis and then I asked about his wife and he said yeah you know she got uh, a disease uh, several years ago uh, MS and now she has dementia now they're our age they're our age and first lady and I talked about that on the way home and I thought my god so much has happened to him and so much has happened to her she's in rehab and probably doesn't even recognize it. and I think about how blessed we are and I got home and I found his name on Facebook and I said I began to encourage him and I began to type some words to lift him up and because I know that he said man it just hit us hard and the spirit wouldn't let me go to bed last night until I said something that would encourage and build him up I said man you would never know uh, the way that you go over and take pictures with your wife and I see you taking flowers I never knew you were on crutches and a prosthesis and nobody ever knew that she had dementia I knew she had MS but I didn't know that he said that's how we have decided to try to live our life I, that's what you ought to do lift somebody up have you lifted somebody up today do you give somebody a flower or do you just give them a weed do you try to let somebody progress or you try to impede their progress do you tell somebody that they can make it or do you do everything in your power to trip them up? I wish I had somebody. Paul said we got to build up the body and then, then secondly, I got a minute, I got to go. He said, we got to fellowship with each other. We got to fellowship with each other. Uh, Hebrews 10, 25 said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves, which is uh, common to many. In other words, you ought to make your intimate friends Christians, believers. You ought to fellowship. We got kindred spirit. We have like-minded. Uh, sometimes, my God, we don't even take time enough to fellowship right here in the church. We don't even encourage and fellowship right in the church. My God, but the Bible said we ought to enjoy each other's company. And you know, we got saints talking about, I don't like to be around them people in church. I, I don't know, child, I don't fool with them folk up there. Uh, you know, my God, and you ought to have believers as your closest friend so we can help encourage each other. It's all right. I got some friends that's not hanging out in church right now, but in terms of whenever I'm really in my real, real uh, uh, buku fellowship is going to be somebody that thinks like me and believes like me and all that. So that's how we build each other. And then the third thing, I come down to 30 seconds, Elder. Uh, we got to help each other. That's how we're going to build up each other. He said, we got to help each other. In other words, Galatians 6 and 10 says that we ought to do good for each other, especially those who are of the household of faith. Every now and then, you ought to be found trying to do good for somebody else. Isn't that right? We love for people to do good for us, but uh, how many times are you trying to do something good for somebody else? We ought to do good, and that will help build up the body. I'm down to 20 seconds. You know when you're building somebody up, and you know when you're not building somebody up. Isn't that right? Don't act as if you don't know. We know when we're tearing down people, and we know when we're building each other up. Uh, the enemy with his diseased and false doctrine uh, comes in because of our not building each other up uh, in the word of God and in the likeness of God uh, through Jesus Christ. That's how we're going to contend with the face. I'm down to 15 seconds. But is there anybody that will get up on your feet this morning and high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
I'm going to help uh, uh, build up the body. I'm going to encourage you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you five of my seconds to walk over and encourage somebody. Sometimes it's a high five. Sometimes it's a hug. Sometimes it's just saying, you're going to make it. You can take it. You're going to make it. Come on, I'm giving you some of my time. Tell somebody something good is getting ready to happen to you. Tell somebody you can turn around in this situation. Embrace somebody and tell them don't you give up. Uh, don't you throw in the towel. You can make it. Uh, you can take it uh, with Jesus on your side. Things are going to work out fine. We're going to make it. I'm going to build you up. Uh, you build me up. Uh, you tell me I'm going to make it. I'm telling you, you're going to make it. The devil is defeated, uh, and we are victorious. Uh, we are more than conquerors uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, is there anybody in here who is more determined now? I've been through hell. I've been through high waters, but I believe uh, that I shall see uh, the salvation of the Lord. Uh, I got enemies on the left. Uh, I got enemies on the right. Uh, I got the devil behind me, but I'm going to put one step in front of another, and I'm going to declare that what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for my good. Is there anybody in here who will determine that no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper in every tongue that rises in judgment? He shall condemn. Is there anybody in here who knows? I don't care what's happening in D.C. I know who's on the throne. His name is Jesus, the righteous Lamb of God, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. I got victory. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But let me tell somebody, you got to open up your eyes because you got more going for you than more that's going against you. If God be for you, who can be against you? Say yeah, say yes, yes, hallelujah. Everybody stand up. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Or you can just visit us online at www.friendshipgastonia.com. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.